my my perception of marriage was you're just spending the rest of your life with somebody that you think that you could maintain a companionship with. You know what I'm saying? So we already maintained that companionship for like five, six years. So I'm like, what can possibly change aside from the fact that we're living in one household now? You know what I mean? So it could either go south or it could be the same type of companionship you guys always had. And the reality of it was we did maintain that for the most part, you know what I mean? Like there's little disagreements here and there because I want things a certain way and she's kind of carefree, right? But other than that, the... <laughs> I thought that marriage was like happy and lovey-dovey and cute and perfect all the time. And you know, teamwork makes the dream work and all that good stuff, you know what I mean? He's right about the companionship. Like we already built, you know, that relationship. So you would assume that it would work out, um, which it did work out, but there's a lot of disagreement because we never lived together and we weren't around each other every single day. You know what I mean? Before being married and moving in together, like we we weren't around each other 24 seven. So when we were around each other 24 seven, it wasn't the same relationship. It wasn't as exciting, you know what I mean? As it was when we saw each other once a week. So when, when Chris was saving up, I also started saving up as much as I could as well. I didn't have a good paying job. I worked like maybe like $15 an hour or something. Um, so I tried to save like $100 here and there every month. So we were probably at our parents' house for like a year. And then we, after that, we were tired of it. So we had an end goal and we saved for a year. And then we moved into our condo. It was a first time home buyer, like um, discount type thing where you could put uh, minimum five percent, five percent down, um, and so that we took advantage of that, and that's how we we're able to get this condo that we're in now. And yeah, having a child, you know, sometimes it's sometimes people have like you know easy babies, um, and then <laughs> I don't think Issa was difficult, but it was just a lot to adjust to as new parents. Um, and I was really, really, I just remember being really tired and I felt like even though he was doing things, I felt like he wasn't doing enough, you know what I mean? And I would always be like argue with him about waking up in the middle of the night with, with Issa or, you know, holding Issa so I can take a shower or something, you know what I mean? Like in the beginning, it was bad. It was like... Because Issa was like really needy for his mom. So you'd cry a lot, bro. And like ball, like you're killing him credit. And I mentally couldn't handle that, you know what I mean? Because I didn't spend a lot of time with him. I was at work most of the week, right? Whereas she spent a lot of time with him. So she knew how to customize her mind to that lifestyle. Whereas I was new. So she'd be like, okay, I gotta take a shower. And I'd panic. I'd be like, I don't know what the hell to do with this kid cries. Like I'm trying to feed him. He's not being fed. I try to change him. He's still crying. Like now what? You know what I mean? But I don't want to disturb her because I want her to have her alone time. So it's a very, very, very frustrating time. The compromise is you stepping up as a man and just dealing with it and being thrown into the fire. Like when she has to go to Alfie's wedding and she left me with this kid for like three hours. It was the worst time ever. But well, you know what? It was a learning experience. And I did call her down and say, get your ass home. Yeah. But it was a learning experience for me. And it was at that moment I said, yo, I really gotta like figure this kid out and really observe him. I can't just come home from work and go take a nap. Like I actually have to like customize myself the way she did. And you know what, when I did, now the kid's in love with me. You literally have to like jump into it and like try your best. You can't, you can't. There's no point this. in arguing with your significant other about the baby or whatever because that's just time wasted. Like, that's time you could have spent actually trying to fix the situation instead of arguing about the situation. My yeah. advice is really for the for the men in the relationship, please, like, just try to do anything you can to support your woman because that's all she wants, you know, is just some help and some support. Communication is something that we always deal with. That's one thing that I feel like is really, really hard. Like, something that is hard to work on and you have to always work on it because sometimes you'll you get so comfortable with your significant other that you forget like how to how to talk to them you know what i mean like sometimes we talk like we're just homies like we're just friends sometimes me and him will talk to each other like we're our children like like he's my child like oh 
can you pick that up? Like, do this, do that. You know what I mean? And like, we have to remind ourselves, like, okay, wait a minute, we're in a, we're in a relationship here. We're not, this isn't my child. <laughs> like, maybe I shouldn't talk to him like that. But also, not just the way you talk to them, but also when I say communication, I mean like saying how you feel. You know what I mean? Like, don't let things build up in your mind because over time that will just lead to a huge argument. <laughs> And you don't want that. So communication is definitely something that we're constantly working on. Marriage kind of like it sounds like, and it is to an extent, like you just, you get to like chill with your best friend, kind of like sleep and wake up with them, do everything with like your best friend, kind of like that. But then obviously comes with trials and issues and like, I think two humans living in the same house, the whole ego thing comes up again. Like, you know, like not even, not even about religions. Like, no, I'm right here. I'm right there. No, like, no, we have to do this now. No, we don't do this. Kind of like that. When I was younger, younger, and, and we never really considered getting married. Like when we were like, I don't know, teenagers or whatever. I thought of marriage as like a kind of like a weird, scary thing. Just because I was like, I don't want to change who I am for a man, you know, like, I, I don't want to like lose my identity or like or like who I am because my husband wouldn't like me doing a certain thing or like you know what I mean and like it's not like that at all and when you get married it's like it's it's like I love my husband and if he doesn't want me to, want me to do something or vice versa it's like we we talk about it and we figure something out it's not like that at all so if that is a, ever a fear for anyone it shouldn't be I'm sure people go through that and that's, yeah it's not a I don't think it's a normal thing in a marriage, in a healthy marriage at least. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, it has to be healthy marriage and you have to have, you have to love your partner enough to want to talk to them about it and... Even if you don't agree with what they're doing, right, just because of the fact that you love them, you, you're going to have to compromise some way or meet them somewhere. Yeah. We yeah. gotta talk about it. Like, it's not, it's not, it just can't be a no. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no such thing as yeah, no. Yeah, there's no such marriage. thing as a no. Like, it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, is it really, like, you think it's a no, why? Like, yeah, it's, you a, know, it's, like, it's not a no, it's a, okay, how can we compromise? Yeah. I don't like this, where, where can we meet? You know what I mean? Like, okay, we can do this, but let's not do this. But you know how people say that they don't want to get married until their career is set? You know what I mean? Like they want to focus on their career completely. I think we're the kind of couple that we're both like very ambitious with our careers. And we both kind of felt that. But then we're like, no, like we want to make this, we want to do this the right way, we want to get married. But then we're still focusing on our careers. Like we, I think we kind of have that balance. As like, we're not giving up things for a career. We're not, we're not, we don't have, we still don't have time to do like cooking and all that stuff. We're, we're still focused on our careers primarily. So we try to make up for that. We yeah. take out a lot more and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think that's a compromise that younger couples can make. Like if you're thinking that, yeah, that's true. that you don't want to get married soon because you're too focused on your career, like, especially if you're like a, like a, a brown girl like especially right because i think i think a lot of like desi girls and pakistan indian girls go go into marriage with the mentality like oh crap i'm gonna have to do all this work i'm gonna have to cook and all that in the brown household or like the desi household i think guys just generally get away with doing less chores than the girls so and it's not like that in like a marriage per se with like younger generation like desi people so that's one thing so Masa was scared that he had to do laundry and do dishes which yeah which I got around. Yep. And it's not that big of a deal. So, yeah. Like, culturally, brown guys versus brown girls are different the way they grow up. And actually, for me, it was different too, because I grew up with older sisters. My older sister was always the one who did all the chores. Like, I never really picked up on chores until she left the house and got like married. So, like, I feel like it, it has to come to you at a certain point. And, like, you're like, I didn't want to see my mom do chores all the time, so I did chores. And it's the same thing with him, right? It's like, it's like he never realized it was really a problem until, like, he, seen, he sees the problem and then we have to just work on it. So, like, it wasn't a big deal, but it has to, like, there has to be a problem before you solve it. Like, it's not just going to happen. And I, th I, think, like, I think sometimes you also just see, like, if you do, like, a chore or something, like, the first time I did dishes, like, she was, like, really happy. So was okay, like that's like one way to like make her really happy, like get her in a good mood, right? So that's that is something I just think about. So like whenever, so that's especially why like when she goes out with her friends or something, like, okay, like it's a good time. Like I'm just gonna like surprise her by like cleaning the whole kitchen and doing the dishes, you know? Because obviously I guess when you come home, like after a long day with your friends or whatever, when you go out, last thing you want to think about is doing chores, right? So in the marriage as it goes on, you become more and more mindful of like your partner, mm -hmm. you know, and like you want to make their lives easier. Yeah. Right, and you're not always kind of expecting in return. It's just like yeah. I just want to make their life easier right now. I think as you get married to something, you kind of learn slowly that you're better than the other person at. 
right? Like I think finds a little bit more. She's better than me at, at laundry and just taking care of it more organized. So she does that. I hated doing the dishes at the start. But I kind of realized that. Hey, I know like, he fine. picked on picked up dishes. I'm so impressed. And he does the dish, dishwasher so much better than I. Yeah, do. and something I kind of found that I kind of enjoyed. If that's weird, like I kind of like like when if, like when like when I'm home alone and if finds out if finds home like I want to chill. You know what I mean? Like we're hanging out. But when I'm home alone, it's something I just enjoy doing chores then. It's like I can do it at my own pace, there's no pressure. I think every young couple or every yeah. young every young Muslim struggles with like, you know, like I wanna have fun, I wanna have a good time. Like, you know, like we live in Toronto versus like, you know, like Islamic values, like, you know, like I wanna be the best Muslim I can be. I'm just trying to find like a nice balance. I think that's what it's always been for any young Muslim growing up in Toronto. It, it, it doesn't go away when you get married. Just I think I think people believe that, oh, you don't want to get married. Like, oh, like everything's going to be halal now, you know? It's not like that. Like, yeah, like your relationship's halal, but you still like a lot of You're still stuff. a person who, you're the same person before marriage. Like, yeah. the way you see life, the way you see like certain things hasn't changed. And like, you can't change just like that, you know? Yeah. Um, I think another thing we are working on is communication. I feel like that's just that's just like a thing. That, like I said, like like you just get better at it with like every day and like every time you communicate. And by communication, I mean like as hard as it is to have a conversation, you should have it. Or like if you want to say something to a person and you, you want to compliment them, you want to say something nice, but like. I don't know, you feel shy or like your ego comes in the way, like do it. Like if there's something that you think you need to do to like make your relationship better, but you don't have the boss to do it, just don't. The surprising thing about being married is that um, it, it felt like a mirror, like our first year felt like a mirror, a constant mirror up against me. Um, you know, in that year I learned about how I was rigid. I learned about how I had really internalized ideas of like, this is what men do and this is what women do in a relationship. I thought that the expectation would be that I'd be a stay at home mom or I'd take on, maybe I would work, but I would still have a load of the responsibility of taking care of kids and the house on me. I didn't find it to be an inspiring kind of idea of marriage. I wanted it to be someone that um, saw me through bigger eyes than I saw myself. Um, I wanted it to be a man that was very secure in kind of their own thing, that we didn't have to have the same interests. We didn't have to like the same things or have the same group of friends, but that he was so secure in who he was as a person that it didn't bother him that I was also secure in who I was. I think I had this perception of men that they were very intimidated by women who knew what they wanted and knew who they were. And I didn't want a man that was intimidated or felt like in competition with. But the reality is like I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it any other way. This guy's my best friend. And any success that I see is a direct result from the support that he provides me and the love that he gives our children and the attention that he gives our children and our family. Um, and really like when I don't see myself, like when I when I said that I wanted somebody who saw myself, saw me through bigger eyes than I saw myself. That's exactly what I got. Often when I have that self-doubt or don't um, have the confidence in myself to do something or maybe just have an idea that I'm unsure of, he's always the one like reminding me of the things that I've achieved, the person who I am, the things that I can do. Always being like, yo, and if you fail, I'm here to catch you with no judgment, right? Like those are the things that I wanted um, and alhamdulillah, those are the things that I got. I remember the very, like we moved in together, we got married in October, we moved in together in November. Early, like that first week we spent in the same apartment, I got invited out to some friend's house and I went out. And I was like, kind of tentative about this, me going out. It's the first time that we like, we're living together. You know, do I ask permission? Do I have to, do I have a curfew? Like, it was just weird. Like all of these very traditional notions that I had been buried in were like bubbling up. And now it was like, I went out, it was like quarter to midnight. It's late, I'm downtown, we are living uptown. And he texts me an innocent like, hey, how's it going? And I read it as, where are you? Get your ass home right now. And I, the hour that it takes me to get like, to get home on, on the train, I'm like fuming at this argument that we haven't had, that he hasn't had with me. But I'm like, who does he think he is? Controlling my life. I was independent before this. But I was like, so I was oscillating between really mad and really upset and just like, 
like just feeling caged in. And when I got home, I like ready to confront him. I tell him, he's like, I was really just asking you how, like there was, you That's actually it. like when you got home early, I was yeah. like, oh, you're oh, you're home early. And I was like, oh, you're not mad? Why would I be mad? And like, I, I had completely made this whole narrative in my head about the conversation. And so, yeah, like that first year was, was trippy for me because I knew the type of marriage I wanted, but I had internalized all of the, this messaging about the type of relationship that I, that was expected. And it was a constant conflict with myself. It wasn't an expectation that he had. He was like constantly trying to remind me that that's not coming from him. Like he doesn't care. I was literally just asking you how you were doing. I was checking in. You come home when you come home. You're a grown woman. I got exactly what I wanted at a young age. You know, I was like, I wanna, I wanna have my, I wanna, I wanna find my clear Huxable, and I found my clear Huxable. Stop, strong, independent, unapologetically black, <laughs> um, successful, wanting to be successful, setting high goals for herself, and if anything, even higher goals for me. Like that's what I wanted. Like I didn't. I think our, especially our first year of marriage was a lot of bit, a little bit more different for her than it was for me. I come from a family of women. So like, I understand how to navigate women with respect to the fact that I grew up in a single, uh, single parent household run by my mother. My mother's got six siblings, five sisters, one brother. Um, and my grandmother was a matriarch. I come from 27, her 27 grandchildren. I think six of us are boys. So like, I, I understand a lot of the differences that are, you know, that are inherent between men and women because I was kind of thrust upon it from a young age. We were both very independent people. Like, before, like when we got married, before we got married, like I took care of myself. I cooked my own meals. I didn't, I know I didn't eat like some, like a lot of other men who live on their own. I didn't eat like TV dinners or eat out a lot. I cooked dinners. I came from a family where I was taught how to cook and take care of myself, take care of my house. But at the same time, like, and I think, you know, your, your, some of your friends kind of think it's, you know, very interesting, you know, the type of woman that they know you do. Like, I don't cook my own meals anymore. And I refuse to, I got married for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and I'm happy to do it. But my wife, you know, and, and you know, yes, she does the cooking in the household. If she's working or if she's out or she's coming home, then I cook, of course. But like, even still, like last week, you know, I cooked, I cooked the kids their food, their dinner, and it was like steaks that I made. And then I sat down with the other steaks that hadn't been made and I waited for her to finish what she was doing because somehow the steak tastes better when she makes it. I don't know why. Right. So, I mean, but she's never picked up a bag in her life. She's never taken out the garbage in her life. She doesn't have to drive. I don't you know drive, what I mean? I don't want to. She doesn't want to. Like, like, like. It's I, interesting what, like, the kind of social contracts we have created between us. The things that we really enjoy to be like, this is the man's job and this is the woman's job. And then there's other places where, like, my friend or friends are perplexed as to, like, how are you out this evening? Where are your kids with their dad? Right? Or, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'll take a week long trip alone. Where are the kids with their dad? So in that sense, we're not a traditional couple or we don't conform to traditions. But then there's some things that like, I just know, I know that he gives me so much space to be me, independent from being his wife and being the mother of our children, that I, that makes me want to do the things that make him happy. And what makes him happy? To have his wife cook him his dinner or his breakfast or whatever. And so that's the exchange. He had to help navigate my rock bottom because it really felt like somebody had pulled the rug from under me and all of the emotions that came and all of the self doubt that came and all of, all of, and you know, the postpartum on top of that. Um, and so I think it was beautiful to me, see my husband, a man who I knew to be strong and supportive become reborn through the birth of our daughter and now me seeing him as a father and admiring him as a father and seeing him grow with our child but also seeing him change as a result of 
me losing my job and really like being on the brink of falling apart and having somebody like just hold me together. I, you know, I, they were challenging times, but I think it exposed a lot about the potential of our relationship and the strength of all of that pre-work that we had done to ensure that like we understood each other. I, you know, like I look at those, you know, those difficulties and I like, you know, I honestly think that, you know, Allah gives us these difficulties and these challenges to like literally, like while you're in the difficulty, in the challenge, like Allah gives that challenge and that difficulty to, for you as an individual to become better and to develop. But then when you come on the other side of that difficulty, when you come on the other side of that challenge and you get through it, like then Allah, that situation Allah is presenting for you to, to like have greater love for your, your, you know, your spouse because you witnessed like the work that they did, you know, to support your family and to support your marriage through those difficult times. So when, you know, when she was pregnant with a man and to be able to stick to, to see firsthand her body change because it's something that I did to her, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, for her to go through the, you know, the, the difficulties of child, you know, childbirth, you know, in order to bring a child in this world for me, not just for herself, but I'm looking at it from my perspective. I watched her do this. I watched how strong she was and I watched how she, like, she, she bore through those difficulties. And then at the end of it, I was able to appreciate, you know, who she was and what she means to me. But I'm like, I'm seeing somebody who was like, yo, like you just had a baby and you lost your job and you're fighting the employer to like get what it is that you do and then you come out of it on the other side with like i'm gonna get my masters and i'm gonna start this new business and being entrepreneurial it's like like i respect that game i respect that hustle and grind and then on top of that then i'm just like yo like i'm not carrying a baby and i'm not doing any of that like then it kind of creates like, you know, you, you feed off each other's successes and you feed off each other's like work ethic. It's kind of a, a magical experience to have children, to think like the idea of having a child and then this a seed that grows into an actual human being that yeah. I'm not now having conversations with, hearing their opinions, forcing them to have eat their food, like, you know, watching them grow and discover the world brand new is like, is a miracle. Like that's God's work right in front of you really. After it's all said and done and you've worked through the pain, you just feel invincible. You're just like, I popped the baby out of me. I can do it. I literally can do anything. I just, you know, brought a human being into this life. Everything is different. We have less time. We have less sleep. Everything that we do is thinking about what's good for our kids. I think, you know, for me, it has really um, made me think about my relationship with Allah and what does it mean to be like thinking about my relationship with Allah, my relationship with Islam, the things that I believe at my core, not because I was taught by my parents or at a madrasa or at a mosque, and then want to impart that onto my children. I have no intentions on ever being a single father ever, ever, ever in my life. Um, because that, sh that stuff is hard and it's not beneficial to the child or my or the parent like I see I don't see my men just in the creation of children or the support like I give them a house and I, I put food in their belly which is kind of like the, the traditional like way that fathers think or men think of children you think of children first you create them for your legacy um, and then you support them financially or materially, which is, yes, that is like, that is like the, the basis, like the foundation of being a father. But like what that foundation supports is more than that, you know, and in my, in, in, for me, it's like, I actually take a lot of pride in the fact that there's things that my kids will not like they come to me first like their preference is to come to their father for certain things because 
like in their eyes i'm better than her <laughs> at doing it like i'm being yeah. serious right like you know um and like taking care of my kids and being an emotional support for them and you know a mental support and a spiritual support like those are more important to me like than like just the material things but it also shows like that shows my completeness as a man in my opinion am i enough am i just enough for them is my madness enough for them to to create like good human beings in this in this world honestly i was a very individualistic person in the sense that i was very decisive so i would know what i want i would take my decision and move on and make that happen so when i got married i was looking for somebody who was also like you know was very decisive and very um you know who had their own goals and i was and we would have obviously that we love and everything are you know, between us uh, what i didn't realize is that once you're married like you can just take a decision and move on with things there has to be a lot more parameters which um, you know which go into those decisions and sometimes you have to have more discussions around them before you make uh, decisions uh, when i first started that was uh, a little difficult for me to settle into because of the way i was used to living my life um, and it took me some time to get into the habit I of consulting being and discussing consulting with the discussing spouse. before um, i take any decisions on my day to day you know activities or what i would like to do and i think that i'm still learning um it's something which i aspire to try to improve uh, every time uh, because i still get um, you know uh, rap on the wrist sometimes when i take i do some back do tend to take some decisions for all of us and she's like why didn't you ask me you didn't think about this and i'm like oh i didn't think about it <laughs> and then i get you know so i'm still trying to control that kind of impulse so i think i always knew and i was always up for it because this was my idea of getting married to a person is to look for companionship and uh, a direction in which we both grow together so i think i was always um somebody who looked for this in a marriage from day one but to have ideas in your mind and to actually practically make it work with a person is two different things So I I think that's where the gap gets closed when you actually get married and experience it to experience it for yourself and then you um you tweak your plans and you change them and you um make them more personalized when you know what your spouse is like which you get to know only a lot major chunk of your spouse you'll get to know only after you've spent a few months or years after marriage if one person is continuously making the compromises and the other one mm-hmm. is continuously uh you know very strongly in. opinionated mm-hmm. uh, then mm-hmm. um, you know it's not a healthy so sometimes as two different uh, individuals we it's normal for us to disagree on certain things but we i think we find the right balance uh, in in be, in being able to compromise in equal uh, measures to in equal Try to. yes so that we are uh, you know do, you know having our way but also making sure the other person is happy and uh, most importantly our children are happy and are progressing through it we also take a lot of uh, status checks on how how things are working out so if one or something is not working or the yeah, or our child is not happy mm-hmm. then we make quick we amendments could. and change our approach accordingly yeah. there's always going to be hurdles uh, with, within each other uh, one of the Strong ongoing man. hurdles we feel um, you know i personally think is that and i'm sure most couples would be having this is how we want to bring up our children also we sometimes uh, differ on the way we want to uh, bring them up in terms of education like alia is uh, very uh, focused on wanting to make them very competitive she wants to front load uh, a lot of things she wants to teach them uh, multiple things but my opinion has always been that i want um, you know they're going to a school and you know and they know what they're teaching them so let them focus on that and we should focus on extracurriculars and other things which they would not learn from school but then we try to find the balance um, and make sure that you know our children are doing things uh, you know as much as they're able to without having you know loading too much on them but also enjoying what they do for example when we were um you know deciding to put uh, our daughter into the french immersion 
yes. So Alia was very very apprehensive very about apprehensive, it. Very apprehensive, considering so, that none of us come from friends. She was like, we don't speak French. How are we going to help her? Or we don't have Absolutely. any idea. How do you think this is going to ever work out? Mm-hmm. So that was her. She was freaking out literally. But I was like, you won't need to help her. Like you know, I, you know, she's young and she'll. pick up french really easily and we have all the tools and equipment available mm-hmm. today which is you know which was never available in the past the internet and google and we definitely are in a position to be help to help her as much and uh, you know i'm sure the teachers know their jobs and we are not the first people to have sent our kids to french school when we ourselves don't have a background and um, i was very insistent on that piece and alia finally gave in and i think that it worked out well for yeah, and no, i think it's the best decision that we took and so, i'm glad that uh, yeah. you know i i uh, i did not resist it as much and uh, and uh, you resisted i resisted as much but i gave in okay <laughs> okay and then i i listened to you yeah. we we put her in Uh-huh. Yeah, so she I, is doing very I well. Kind of put my foot down on that. Yeah, point. he put his foot down because it was the closest <laughs> school to our house. No, one that's of not the true. reasons. <laughs> one of the reasons. But that's so shallow. Te- no, but I would drop her even if it was like a few miles yeah, away. Well, I think knowing the temperament <laughs> of our child, he uh, he thought that she would be able to, and he reassured me that you know, uh, worst come worst, we always have. Uh, chance to pull her out and put her back in an english school but if we do not give it a try how are we going to know if this is for us or not and i think he convinced me at that point that it's it's okay to uh, to do something that is uh, that we're not comfortable with but if we do not step out of that comfort zone we're not going to know what it's like so let's give it a try and then uh, and then we'll see and uh, and she's been in the school for 3 years now and uh, and very very happy so yeah this is how this was one of the examples uh, <laughs> that uh, on how we do problem solving and how we convince each other of yeah, our own yeah. ideas there have been times and, when uh, you know she's been right and i've been wrong and then you're okay like you know Sometimes uh, you know we do have our "I told you so" moments. Yeah, I told you so. <laughs> we shouldn't have um, done that. But then, yeah. if it does work out, then um, you know we are both ready to acknowledge that. If it doesn't work right. out, then <laughs> then we have to face each other. <laughs> we face each other slack, but I I think we are a little empathetic. Uh, we try to be as empathetic as possible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be as empathetic as possible <laughs> to the other. 